Welcome back. It's hard to believe only 14 months have passed since I published this very crude video using the black and white tracking cameras from my G2 headset to have my first mixed reality experience. It was shaky, black and white, and the resolution was terrible, but still I saw great potential for the future of flight training utilizing mixed reality. Unfortunately, to get decent pass-through required a $6,500 headset from Vario and a $1,500 a year subscription. Then along came the Quest 3 from Meta offering decent color pass-through video for only $500. And thanks to Virtual Desktop and their ability to chroma key the video from the sim and replace it with pass-through video, there are some options to implement mixed reality in home simulators. I've tried a number of these in my videos, but I've never found the perfect solution yet. They were either difficult to set up, they had limited mask shapes, including square corners, and some didn't support OpenXR. So when Mark at the SimHanger channel told me about a new possibility called SimXR and put me in touch with the developer, I was anxious to give it a try. And in this video, I'm going to tell you the pros and the cons of using SimXR to try to institute mixed reality in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, if you saw my recent video on a program called Color Panel, SimXR is very similar. As you see with Color Panel, you can introduce panels with pass-through video and position them. Unfortunately, they are restricted to uh, rectangular shapes. And that's one big limitation that SimXR overcomes. Color panels also limited to only one panel at a time, and SimXR allows up to five. The installation and setup is covered quite well by the author's tutorial, which I'll link above. You'll end up with folders in your community folder for each panel you install. You can see I have installed three here. Once you're in your sim, you can open the menu bar and you'll see the three panels appear there, XR1, 2, and 3. Now let's open XR2 and you'll see what the panel looks like when it first opens. It's small. You can maneuver it using the controller. It always keeps the panel normal to the controller. I found it difficult to move the panel and still keep the angle correct and maintain the panel parallel uh, to the instrument panel in the simulator. You can resize the window by dragging the edges on the bottom and right side of the window. This gives you a larger working area. And it's just a matter of, of uh, repositioning that window where you think you're going to need it approximately. And once you get it there, release the trigger and it should stay there. Here again, you got to keep it square and it's kind of tricky. Notice I'm reaching across my chest to try to keep that angle right. And then we can just resize that a little bit more, make it the size we want it. And then start clicking. As you click, you'll see the blue dot appear. And those are your uh, vertices. I'll add a couple here. You can see the, the uh, pass-through starting to show through there because we've set the color correctly. And we'll put the fourth, and now we have it. Now you see these little white they're like little Bezier uh, control points, and you can use that to add curves to any of the sides. So you have uh, pretty much as many vertices as you want, so you can make virtually any shape, but you gotta keep it on the panel. And then it's a matter of aligning uh, the pass-through area around the real-world um, panel or things that you'd like to show through. When you select a control point, you can see it gets highlighted in white, and then you can move it around and resize. And you need to be careful because if you drag a, a vertex or a control point outside the bounds that the window can expand to uh, and you release it there, it can get stuck there and I don't know how you get it back. I just had to start over. And those control points are pretty small targets. See, and I tried to click and if you miss, if you just miss one of those points by a little bit, it makes a new one. Now you can delete it with the menu there or even undo. Clicking the green close button will hide the interface. Then you're ready to fly. 
Clicking a pass-through area allows you to reopen the interface for further editing. Let's add that curve back in and close and there you can see we're ready to use it. And now I can see my hands, I can interact with uh, the simulator uh, in this panel. Unfortunately, the panel isn't wide enough to do a complete front instrument panel. It requires placing two panels side by side and I found that a little problematic as I'll explain. With a little patience you can get a very impressive mixed reality experience. Where SimXR really excels is for simple layouts with multiple panels that don't overlap much. Uh, you can lay out a nice layout. The one catch though is if you uh, close a panel like X3, XR3 is this right panel for the throttle. When I close it and I reopen it, it reopens but you can see the windows collapsed and you can see it is behind that other panel. Now it's hard to click it because I'm trying to get through the first panel so I'll close the first panel when I reopen that, for some reason, that does remember its shape. And I'm not sure why some do and some don't. But as you can see, I'll open that XR3 up again. Uh, I'll pull the sides out to try to resize it. And you'll see that it retained the shape just fine. But the window size collapsed. And the uh, location is not always the same. So it's a little hit and miss and I find it a little bit disconcerting. Uh, and when you can see once I touch that, if I don't keep my hand uh, angle the same, uh, and then I can readjust it, but it does work well. And once it's uh, established, it's, it's really a very uh, immersive experience to fly this way. It certainly eliminates the need to uh, remove or peek under your headset uh, to find those buttons that you need for the autopilot or gear or whatever. As you can see here, I was able to create a full instrument panel by placing uh, two panels side by side. In fact, I put another panel off to the left uh, on my iPad just to show you. Now that's all three of the panels that I had installed. It was quite a pain trying to get these all aligned. Now the real problem with multiple panels is that the areas on the panel that are not included in the pass-through, if those areas overlap, uh, it's difficult because you're not sure which one is in front of the other unless they're selected. And the uh, control array sometimes seems to select the wrong one and you end up putting a new vertex in the wrong panel and it can turn into quite a mess. It took me quite a few tries just to get this up and running. The amazing thing is that it really does work well once it's set up and you're doing something uh, on a $500 headset here. It's really phenomenal that you can have pass-through video uh, in mixed reality for a price like that. You know, I think mixed reality is kind of like virtual reality. Unless you try it, uh, you really don't know what you're missing. I think we've all experienced that in VR and MR is the same way. I encourage you to give this a try because until we get more people involved in MR, we're not going to have the developers uh, putting their time and energy into developing the tools that we need to really make it work right and seamless without all the monkey business of moving panels around and having to reset them on each flight and so on. We need to support developers like uh, Roy at RK Apps for spending their time working on these tools uh, and uh, encourage them so that they can make them better. Speaking of improvements, what would I like to see improved about this app? Let me share a list. First, window sizes, shapes, and locations should be saved from session to session so that when you open them, you don't have to resize them or reorient them. You just have to align the video pass-through. Second, I think the user interface is a bit too large and located in an awkward place. If you're trying to align panels laterally, that can get in the way. It would be nice if it could be reduced in size, maybe even pop up when it's needed and go away when it's not needed. Plus, the pass-through chroma color only needs to be set once for all the panels. Finally, I'd like to see a way to move the panels in a more precise way. I'm thinking some keyboard commands to control 
each of the translational and rotational axes also would be nice to be able to lock out rotation and translation on certain axes once you have them set correctly while you fine tune the others of course it would also be nice to have a tool like this available for use with x plane as i said at the beginning of this video we've come a long long way in fourteen months from that grainy black and white shaky mr that i tried to what we can do now in the quest three mixed reality solves the problem of pilot interface with the simulator in vr in a very natural way real life pilots don't want to spend time learning how to use a hat switch keyboards mice and and other keyboard keystrokes to operate a sim they just want to sit down grab onto the controls and fly like they do in real life they also don't want to dedicate a room in their house to house three 65 inch TVs to stay proficient in their flying. Mixed reality done right fills all those squares. Of course, the thing we're lacking now is the software and I hope we'll see that develop quickly in the future as more and more people try it and adopt it as a way to fly their sims. In the meantime, let's support Roy at RK Apps and other developers developing for mixed reality. At RK Apps, has given me three user keys to provide to three lucky people who want to win a copy of this app. Just leave a comment in the next seven days and I'll be contacting three lucky winners. Well, for those of you still here, thanks for hanging in till the end. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends and uh, I love to have your comments on these topics. I get some really great ideas from those who watch my videos. It really is my pleasure uh, to make these. I enjoy the creative part and I love the subject matter. I hope I'll see you again soon on my next video. Thanks for watching.